to endure that behavior. Right, so DM versus CHP. This takes us to the Pretoria High Court. So finally, we have left the promised land and we've gone north over the Yuxke to page 57 in your case law bundle for those who have the resources, page 8 on our um, summaries. And this is a matter that was uh, penned by DeForce AJ on 4th of January 2024, DM versus CHP, ZAGP, PHC 76, Safley reference. And what had happened here was a um, order post-divorce for restoration of a status quo ante. What had happened is mom and dad were under a 50-50 contact regime post-divorce. Mom decided to relocate 500 kilometers away and presented it as a fait accompli to dad. I have simply gone, uh, or 550 kilometers, don't forget the 50. And she limited the fathers to supervised contact for four hours every second week. Court was asked to restore the status quo uh, pending investigation by the family advocate. Um, the court very succinctly at um, paragraph 21 sets out the reasons for the order. Now, in this instance, um, I think the court is justified in restoring the status quo ante. Um, and as far as that's concerned, the court uh, said in paragraph 19, not on your screens, there can be no debate that a move of a child 550 kilometers away and restrict access to supervised contact for four hours every second weekend in a public place from a previous 50% contact regime is a decision which significantly changes and adversely affects the applicant's exercise of parental responsibilities. Now, why is that specific wording used? Because Section 31.2 of the Children's Act says that before taking a decision or a major decision which for that paragraph is any decision which um, alters significantly um, the um, exercise of parental responsibilities and rights of a co-parent, you must first seek their views and wishes. So that's what the court is saying. The court is simply saying this case falls within the four walls of what is set out in section 31.2. Then the ratio of the court, uh, incidentally, the court restored the status quo ante. I could have um, told you that. It's quite obvious. Um, the court did the following. The court said that not only is the respondent's intended conduct a breach of the agreement in section 31.2, but it is one which introduces instability and a massive change to the child's life. Okay, now, three grounds raised here by the court in this one succinct sentence. The first reason is it is a breach of the agreement. So in other words, pacta sunt savanda, people must be kept to their agreements. Then secondly, it's a breach of the Children's Act, section 31.2. And thirdly, it introduces instability and massive change. So then the court says, essentially, it wishes to enforce the agreement, not purely for the sake of Pactus and Savanda, but also because stability and access to both parents is, in fact, in the best interest of the child at this stage. And it points out that these three factors dovetail. So it's a breach of agreement, breach of Section 31, and um, it is a massive change in the child's life. DM versus CHP, that is from the... Pretoria High Court under the pen of DeFoss AJ, 4th of January. 